Before we look at how to start and stop the recordings, let's have a look at how to set up the metronome. You find the metronome in the options menu, then go for metronome. You've got an audio click as a metronome and a MIDI click. Let's listen to the audio click first. Press OK. That's the standard audio beep. You can switch the metronome on and off with this button here. Or you can use C on the keyboard as a shortcut for that button. See, I'm pressing C on the keyboard now. OK. I'm going back into options again for metronome. I'll switch the audio click off and I'll switch on the MIDI click. The high note is this one here, on beat 1, that one, that one, and the low note is the higher that's being played on beats 2, 3 and 4. 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let me stop the arrangement. The MIDI click here. In order to set up your MIDI click, you need to specify a MIDI output. So I'm sending the MIDI click into MIDI out. I haven't got an onboard synthesizer on my setup, so I need to send out the MIDI click into my MIDI interface, and that MIDI interface then routes that click back into my tracks, which are here, and this is my drum track, which I'll use as a metronome track. Um, so you set up your MIDI output. If you've got an onboard synthesizer, you might have a Sound Blaster card. You can set this one to to the um, to Microsoft Wavetable, for example, or or the Sound Blaster A synth, Sound Blaster B synth, and so on. And regarding the Microsoft Wavetable, to be honest, try to avoid that one because it uh, it has shown that it's not very reliable in terms of its stability. In general, if your system seems to be having some timing problems it could be that you're using the Microsoft wavetable as well and that might be causing the timing problems that you've got in your system so try to avoid using that one at all if you can you can use the um, some of the sound blaster synthesizers which are on the sound blaster card and and um, of course you can use all sorts of eternal external synths as well but the MIDI click has got two parts you've got the high note part which is usually played on a beat one and the low note part, which is played on beats 2, 3 and 4. In order to set the high note, you just go down here, and if you left click with the mouse, the notes go low, lower, and if you right click with the mouse, the notes go higher. Now, if you don't know which note plays a certain key, then the, the best thing is to set up your instrument so you can play the instrument on the keyboard, like I can do now. And you might be able to see that whenever I play a key on the keyboard, a new number comes up here, like a C1 note comes up here, which is the standard note for a bass drum sound. A snare drum sound is usually on the D note. And you've got the three hi-hats, F sharp, G sharp, and A sharp, open hi-hat on A sharp. And you have the, um, the side stick, usually on, on C sharp 1. So all I'm doing is, I am... Um, activate this field just by clicking into it and then I'll just hit the key on my keyboard with the right note and I'll do the same thing for the low note let's say I want a bass drum on that one so there's my low note for the bass drum and if I play this now and press play one two three four one two three four Go back into the metronome setting again. You've also got settings for a high velocity, which I've set to 100, and for lower velocity, which I've set to 64. If you want to make this effect more obvious, you can reduce the, the number for the lower velocity, let's say down to 20. I press OK. Start. Two, three, four. You can hear a high velocity on the on the side stick and the fairly mild bass drum sound. If 
If you want, you can run both metronomes at the same time, the audio click and the MIDI click. And those two sounds are supposed to run at the same time, which they are right now. But on certain systems, you might notice that both metronomes, the MIDI metronome and the audio metronome, are not running at the same time. Okay. That's fine for now. If you want to start recording, then you need some sort of a pre-count to know or to tell you when to come in and also what the actual tempo is. So this is the pre-count section. If you don't need the pre-count, you can switch it off. Let's say you're in the tune and you want to start from, a, from let's say, the second chorus in the tune and all you need is to run through the tune and then you're there, for example, then you don't need the pre-count. Or if you're just recording, let's say, speech, what I'm doing, then um, you don't need the pre-count either. So let's have a look at the pre-count. The standard setting is two bars for the pre-count, but sometimes two bars can take a little long for you to play, so a lot of people set this one down to one bar as a pre-count as well. This is my, my personal setting. Um, if you tick on pre-record, pre it means that Cubase will record even during the one bar pre-count. This is useful if you've got um, a musical phrase that starts before the beat or before the beginning of the next bar. Something like da -dum -bum -dum -dum -dum, and then the da -dum -dum will be recorded as well. And pre-roll means that instead of just listening to the click, you'll hear the the actual music which is already being which is already recorded in your arrangement as well as the click. So you can keep this one ticked if you want to. Now sometimes you only want to hear the click during the pre-count and then you don't need the click anymore for the rest of the recording. Other times you need the click during the recording as well. But very often after you've played your music, you don't want to hear the click anymore while the playback's running. So you only need the click for the actual recordings. So you can untick this one and just have the click on the on the pre-count as a count in obviously and for the actual recording. We've talked about this one here before. If we untick this one, all the settings you make in this dialog box will go into your preferences, into your standard Cubase for preferences. And if you do tick this one here, it means that all these settings become part of this particular song only, and then another song could have slightly different settings. Let's have a look at how we can start the recordings in Cubase in more detail. To do this, I'll switch off the MIDI click for the time being, and then also go back to the standard two bars as a count in as well. I'll take off the pre-roll and I'll take off the pre-record for the time being. So the easiest is to just press record two, three, four, one, two, three, four, and off you go. You've seen that the um, the red light comes on as soon as the recording takes place. So I'll do it again. The red light's on already, but nothing's happening. And now play comes on as well, so you can see. Recording is happening, you've got MIDI signal going into the computer, MIDI signal going into the VST instruments, and you can also see the activity bar moving every time I hit the keyboard. Now, the recording stopped here because while I was talking, the song reached bar 9, and bar 9 had the right locator. The right locator was in bar 9, as you can see there, and also here as well. And punch out was was um, selected or switched on. So if you know that you only want to record for let's say two bars, then you can set up your locators like that. Make sure the right locator is two bars after the left locator. Keep punch out, selected or switched on. Hit record. I'm going to just use the asterisk key on the number pad. recording stopped it still plays but the recording doesn't work anymore this brings me to the other punch in button as well let's say you're in, in a piece of music and you only want to record 
during that little section there you can play you can rewind a little bit more make sure punch in is selected press play so nothing is being recorded right now the song is just playing imagine the song playing and there we go and then we've recorded this little bit there another quick way of recording is one of my personal favorites you can you can switch on start start cubase and find your ideas let's say that's my idea and I've got the idea now so while it's playing I just hit the record on the number pad when I'm ready and I finish the recording and I just switch it off again and there's a new part which I've created so Cubase is still playing and I'm still thinking of what I could play next and I play around with my keys so I like this bit or I might do have you noticed I've switched on record while I or once I've had my ideas and then and then there's the part I can then move the part to wherever I want to move it all those parts will select it then I can just move it and place it wherever I want.